Hi, my name is Chad Stuland. I work for Oshkosh Corporation, and I'm a product training specialist on the airport products that Oshkosh makes. Today, I'd like to walk you around a couple of the trucks that we use for snow removal. Uh, one of those being the truck that's behind me, uh, an H-Series with a blower attachment, and the other one is going to be the tractor that we'll talk about later. One of the first things I want to discuss about the, tr the blower truck is uh, that the, the basic configuration of the truck could be a blower, it could have a broom on it, or it could just be used for a plow. Now one of the first things you see as we look down the chassis is that we have two engine compartments. I have the rear engine compartment lifted up right now. So in a basic chassis, what you would have is just that one engine compartment on the back. The middle engine compartment there with the two doors, this is for your implement engine. So anything that we're going to do for power that is not driving the truck down the road, the power is going to be produced from this implement engine. The rear engine is just used to move the truck. Uh, a couple of the nice features about the truck. Uh, the blower head on this is capable of a lot of snow, and I can't remember the numbers right now. But as we look on the inside of it, this is what we call the ribbon. We have a couple different styles of ribbons that can be put on this truck. Uh, this is the standard one. There is also an ice option that's going to have some cuts in it. So if they got a lot of wet and uh, heavy, crusty stuff that's building up on their runways, that'll help chop through that ice build up a little bit better. So that's something that a customer would uh, spec out for their vehicle. As you look inside, that's what we call the impeller. So basically the ribbon is going to pull the snow in, feed it into the impeller, and then the impeller is going to spin it out and actually shoot it out to this little thing that we call the flat shoot. Now another option on these blower heads is that you could have this standard flat chute which you can basically just turn from the right or the left hand side and there's not a lot of control where the snow goes. The uh, better option or the upgrade option would be the loading chute option. With that there is a big stack that sits up on top of here and now I can direct it left and right, I can shoot it up, I can shoot it down, I can shoot it into a, a dump truck, whatever I want to do, and I have a lot more control of where that snow goes. This one works just fine. Um, how we run our ribbon here, on this truck this is a hydraulically operated ribbon, so we basically have two hydraulic motors on each side that are going to be used to spin this. The impeller that's actually driven by what we call a drop box, which is very similar to a transfer case. So our implement engine will create rotational force. When we engage the clutch, that'll engage the output through the drop box and into our impeller, so the impeller will start spinning. So that's kind of a mechanical, and this is kind of a hydraulic setup, but they both work together. It's kind of a neat system. Uh, because you can put different attachments on these trucks, we put quick connects on our hydraulic fittings. So I don't know if anybody's ever seen a hydraulic uh, quick connect that this, that's this big, but that's pretty gigantic. Uh, makes it a lot easier if you have to switch out to a plow or if one of your other trucks goes down, you can easily take the head off and put a different piece of equipment on top of it and keep this truck running. Uh, the hitch assembly, there's a couple different variations of hitches. Uh, for the blower, this is pretty standard though. So to drop this thing off, we just got our safety chains here. This whole rod will pull out from the bottom side lower the hitch, back the truck away. Oh, I forgot. Got to disconnect that prop shaft that makes that impeller spin first though. So, with the impeller, another really cool feature, I'm a mechanic guy, so I like the mechanics of systems. This truck is all run off of what we call a command zone electronic system. So what does that mean? Uh, it's a multiplex system or a J1939 based system. So it means that all these computers talk to each other. So anytime you're trying to do something, it's going through a computer to another computer and so on. So one of the safety features that you get out of using a command zone system is that you can say, hey, if this isn't present, you can't do this operation. It's a lot easier to do that with command zone systems. So for an example of where this comes into play on this truck is let's say we don't want to use this blower head anymore and now we want to put a broom head on there. Well, with a broom, we don't have this impeller coming up to spin anything, or this uh, prop shaft coming up to the impeller. So it's kind of hard to see, especially considering this one doesn't have a prop shaft in it <laughs> right now. Um, but there's a little cradle in there with a sensor on it. So if we were going to drop this off, we'd put that cradle up to hold the prop shaft, 
that sensor then tells the computer, hey, no matter what you do, don't spin that shaft because it's not hooked up to anything. So one of the great benefits of using computers and command zone systems is for safety. Okay? Uh, other cool things. You can see these nice light towers that we have here. This is where customer specifications come in and each customer will order these light towers different. So you can get anything from HID lights to remote control go lights to amber lights to whatever you want. If you want it on the truck for lighting, you can get it. Uh, other neat things this truck has, uh, we have heated windshields so you can kind of see the grid that goes around the glass there. Help keep the snow off of it because as we're going down the runway at 30 miles per hour blowing snow, it builds up pretty quickly. So not only do we have heated windshields, we also have heated wiper blades. Now, in the older trucks, this was a great benefit as well, and it was a great uh, option to have on your vehicle, but it wasn't computer controlled. So a lot of times, operators would leave them on, and they would melt to the glass, and then the maintenance guy's gotta go out there and scrape all this rubber off. So another benefit for the command zone system is that we can time things and say, hey, they haven't been using this truck very long, uh, they shouldn't need this heater system on right now. So we can just shut that off after a time limit. So we can program in safety features very easily because of command zone. And also for not just vehicle safety, but operator safety as well. On our older trucks, we only had a single access point on one side of the vehicle. The new H-Series vehicle platform has doors on both sides. So I have an access ladder just like this on the other side. Doesn't matter where I'm at, when I want to get in the truck, I don't have to walk all around it. Kind of nice when you're out in the blowing snow. Uh, another nice option, this one's got a air chuck for it. So this is gonna have the chassis air built off of the drive engine where I can plug in an air line and actually fill my tires using the air that's being built up by the truck engine. Kind of a neat option. Uh, here we got our air reservoirs for the air brake system and any of the other options that use air. We have uh, air dryer integral in the system, pretty standard stuff there. We got two uh, fuel tanks on this truck and they are tied together so you can kind of see down here. This tank's shut off right now but there is a cross tube that connects both of them together so it will automatically pull from both tanks. So like the old days on your Chevys and Fords, if they had dual fuel tanks, you had to hit a switch to get it to switch over. This is just automatic, it'll automatically pull from both sides. Another uh, system that you have on here is different ways to uh, heat up the engine. So if it's out in a um, snow barn where it's not heated, you can plug this guy in to keep your uh, drive engine and your implement engine or blower engine uh, warmer. Also have an optional battery charger, so we can keep it charged over the summer when it's not being used. Throughout the years, these H-Series trucks have done various different engines in them. Um, anywhere from the old square cab style trucks had the uh, Detroit's 8V92s, I believe it was. Then we went to Caterpillars for a while. Um, then we went to Cummins now. So this is the new Cummins ISX 12 liter. It's uh, capable of 500 horsepower. It's got the SCR um, and DEF system on it, so that's all your emission compliant uh, stuff for the EPA. Uh, really good engine. Another nice thing I like about this one, this one's got a variable geometry turbo on it versus the old Cats, which just had a uh, single or double turbo in it. Variable geometry turbos allow you to build up boost at a wide range of RPMs instead of the standard fixed turbo, which doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, like I said, we have the hood up right now, but we do build in a air over hydraulic jack system for lifting up this hood so you don't have to manhandle it up there. If you don't have chassis air and you still need to get in there, it does have a mechanical handle that I can just jack it up manually. Uh, we were talking about the command zone system a little bit before, so this is a good opportunity to kind of see some of those components that make up the command zone. So this is a power module and an input module. Now input module, that one's pretty easy to figure out. That means we have something back here that the command zone system wants to pay attention to. So when a sensor sees a certain value, it's sending information to the input module. The input module will then transmit it down the chassis to the computers and whichever computer needs to know about it will then activate an output. So how do you get an output? That's basically your power module here. 
So what you can see here, by looking at the labels, you have a lot of battery inputs, and they match up with outputs over here. Battery one, output one, so on and so forth. So these cables, or these wires right here, all coming in, these are my supply voltage on these battery sevens. When we get a computer message down the J1939 network, or data bus system, or command zone system, whatever you want to call it, it's going to transmit down these cables, come in here, and we're going to switch a transistor that basically closes the switch so battery one then becomes output one. So power then is allowed to go out to whatever output we want. And that's how a lot of the different systems on this truck work. Um, I know when I first learned this system, I was very hesitant about, oh my gosh, they got this many computers on this truck, and it made me very nervous. But the nice thing about it is that we have built-in diagnostics. So with command zone system, our dashboard inside the truck, I can actually go in and look at each one of these modules and see if there's a fault. So instead of the old days where I'm walking around with a test light or a meter and I'm trying to poke and find voltage at certain locations, I go up into my cab, I hit a couple buttons and it says, hey, this thing isn't working. I can go right to that power module and look for power there instead of chasing the wire harness all over the truck. So another really great value on this truck. Now we're over on the left hand side of the vehicle and we see this big uh, exhaust stack sticking off the side here. So what this is, is Cummins uh, is using what's called a SCR system, a selective catalytic reduction system. So it's an emissions control. Uh, the EPA has different standards every year. They get upgraded and make it uh, less and less emissions that you can actually allow particulate matter to leave the exhaust stack. Uh, this system uses um, DEF fluid, diesel exhaust fluid. So when the sensors in our exhaust stack, which should be right here and here, there's a big filter in between those, all right? So when those sensors pick up that that filter is getting clogged up, the system will inject urea, which creates a chemical reaction so that that gets hotter and that uh, particulate matter is reduced. Now, one of my favorite features on the Oshkosh H series is something that's called all-wheel steer. Um, and what we're looking at here in the video is actually the manifold that's in control of that. So basically what you see here is this is our control uh, valve here, and you can see a couple electrical connector connectors up on top. So what happens is depending on the different mode of all-wheel steer that you're in, we're going to send an electrical signal back to the solenoid and it will activate this valve and allow hydraulic fluid to go out and turn the rear axle. Very, very cool. On this truck, what we have is we have three different basic modes. You have your normal driving mode, which just means the rear axle isn't doing anything. It's just staying straight, drives like a normal car. Now another part, you have two automatic modes. Okay, So you have what's called a crab steering mode. What that does is there's a position sensor on your rear axle and there's a position sensor on your front axle. So as the driver turns his steering wheel to the right, the sensor picks up that information that the wheels are turning, tells the computer to mimic that same movement at the rear axle. So what we're going to have is both tires going this way, so that means my truck is then going to shift sideways. Really freaky to drive a truck that starts driving sideways, but it's fun. Uh, be careful if you ever try this and make sure you read this manual and don't go do it in a very uh, compact area because it gets scary. The other automatic mode is probably most operators' favorite mode, and what that is is called coordinated steering. So it works very sim similar to the crab mode, whereas there's a sensor in the front, sensor in the back. Now when I turn my wheels to the right, it does the opposite at the back. So now what I get is I get my front wheels to turn this way, my rear wheels turn this way, so now my truck can make a very nice tight turning radius perfect for at the end of the runway. So if you just drive it in coordinated mode, the only time the operator will ever notice it is once he gets to the end of the runway and needs to turn around, you won't believe how tight of a turning radius this truck has. It is very impressive. Now, for my favorite mode, that was operator's favorite mode. My favorite mode is what's called joystick mode. Now that gets a little tricky and again, don't try this at home because if you've never driven it in joystick mode, you can crash pretty quickly. Uh, so basically what you're going to have now is your steering wheel will control your front wheels and independently I have a toggle switch on a joystick that I can independently control the rear wheels. So I can make it do those same types of crab movements or 
the corded movements on the fly whenever I want. Very nice, but it gets very tricky for an unexperienced operator, but it is fun. So we just got done talking about the all-wheel steer modes at the back of the truck. So these are the controls and the indicators for that system. Um, just a quick run through on it. This one says all steer mode and it says coordinated front and rear. Coordinated front and rear is telling you the three different positions the switch can be in. So right now it's all the way up, so it's coordinated. If I put it in the middle, that's front, so now my rear axle is locked and I'm in front steering mode. When you get to rear, what that does, I don't know if you notice this light lit up now, right? So what rear does is actually supply power to this switch, so I can either have it in crab mode or joystick mode. Okay. So for the joystick mode, the joystick is actually up easier to get at, so I'll show you that over here. Now what we're looking at is the actual joystick part of that. So if I was going to use the joystick mode of all-wheel steer, the first thing I would need to do is activate my joystick, which is simply pulling the trigger for a half second until the red LED comes on. Now that the light is on, the joystick is active, and I have it in all-wheel steer mode. So if the truck was running right now, if I pushed this toggle to the left, the rear axle would turn to the left, which would make the truck go right. And that's probably the trickiest thing to get used to. Uh, after about 10 minutes of driving around, though, you get the hang of it pretty quick, and it's not too bad. So again, you would just push it to the left to make the rear wheels go left. That would make your truck veer right. Or I push it to the right, which would make the rear wheels go right, which would make the truck veer to the left. Earlier, I was talking about one of my favorite features on the truck, which is the command zone system. So, command zone is basically Oshkosh's proprietary way of saying multiplexed computers, all right? So, what we're looking at here is this is our main dashboard display. And for the operator, it just looks like a dashboard, and it tells them what's going on with the truck. Um, but for the maintenance part of it, you see that we have these four... Uh, buttons over on the side. Now the biggest thing that most people forget, this isn't a touch screen. So if you look over on the right, these buttons here line up with these buttons here. So for the part that I wanted to talk about was the diagnostics. So if I hit the diagnostics button, I can do start diagnostics. It comes up to the screen which just is telling me that hey you're requesting to do diagnostics and I see that you have an HCAB VIM. Is that what you want to look at? So I just hit select on that one. Now you can see this whole big list and we showed you a couple of those computers back on the back of the truck just to give you an overview. Well here's all the computers that are actually on the truck. So if I hit move down you can see there's quite a few computers there. right? So if I had a problem with something it's as easy as just trying to figure out, first the hard part I guess, is trying to figure out which computer you need to look at for it. Uh, but in the maintenance manual it does have callouts on which um, modules control what. So I'll just pick one that I think I remember. Uh, three is at the back of the truck. So that's actually one of the ones that we were looking at. Right? So if I hit select on that, now I can see this list of all the different outputs that that power module is in control of. So we saw that power one became output one, and by looking at the screen, I now find out, hey, output one is control of the marker clearance lights for the rear, and it's currently off. If I turn the headlights on or the clearance lights on, it switches from off to on and 100%. The 100% thing is kind of tricky. It usually just about everything will say 100%, uh, except for the dome lights. Uh, dome lights are controlled by number two, so let's go back to that one quick. Uh, I was wrong. Power module one. There it is. So dome light is in power module one, right? And we've just talking about that hundred percent. So I'm going to open the door to get the headlights to come on and just kind of watch what that does. Oh, they changed that. Oh, maybe it's on the off cycle. It's on the off cycle. So 80, 60, 40, 20. So instead of just turning straight off, using computer controls to control the dome light, we can step that down so it's kind of a nice fade out effect as I uh, shut the door. So it's kind of a neat little thing to see. Typically when you're looking in here though, it's going to be off, on, or 100%. But that's one of the main reasons why I like this system, because I can troubleshoot it like that. Uh, we just finished up with a basic overview or walk around of the H-Series blower truck. Uh, we're going to look at the H-Series tractor now. And one of the nice things about buying Oshkosh is that between our tractor, 
sorry, between our blower truck and our tractor, a lot of common cab, a lot of same controls, a lot of same command zone stuff. So if you have multiple vehicles in your fleet, it's easy on the mechanics. If they can fix this one, they can fix the next one. So coming over to the tractor. Again, like I said, a lot of this is the same. We have the same cab, we got the same light tower. Now this truck only has one engine, and it's mainly just to drive the truck down the road. So any other kind of equipment that we put on this has to be something that doesn't really require power or it has its own power. So the two main options that you would get attached onto a tractor would be a plow up front, and those come in different widths, and this one doesn't have the full hitch on it yet, but you can pick between three or four different hitch setups. So if you have older plows in your inventory, we can probably put a hitch on here that will allow you to continue to use your current plow. So you don't have to buy a new plow if you don't need to. Um, so this truck cab is the same, light tower is the same, command zone is similar. Um, a lot of those modules that you will see on that truck, there's not as many of them on this truck because it's a smaller truck, doesn't have a second engine, so on and so forth. Uh, walking around, we'll try to find some cool stuff here. Uh, we got battery disconnects. I forgot to point those out on the other truck, I think. But basically, so if this truck's in storage, I can just flip that over to off, and now all the power is off on the truck. Uh, this does provide the mechanic with a spot to put a lockout tag out, so if he's in on it and doesn't want the truck to be able to be started, throw a padlock through there, can't start the truck. Had our same types of connections over here, so we got one for our block heater and we got one for our electrical charger. Uh, this is our battery box located here. Again, you got dual fuel tanks that feed equally on both sides. Uh, now this truck, I don't know if this one is complete yet for the customer or if they're installing their own fifth wheel for a tow behind, but Oshkosh just came out with their new tow behind broom, so this truck could get a fifth wheel attachment here and have the Oshkosh pull behind broom which also comes in two links I believe. This truck is getting ready to get shipped out to our dealer and our dealer is going to be responsible for installing the fifth wheel package on here for towing behind Oshkosh's new tow behind broom package. One of the coolest features on this truck is something that I get to play with uh, is the cab tilt feature. So it's kind of hard to see the drive engine for this truck because it's actually mounted right underneath the cab. So what they did was they put in a air over hydraulic lift system just like uh, we saw on the uh, drive engine on the blower, very similar to the cab. So I'm going to actually lift up the cab here so you can see how that cab tilt feature works. Now that we have the cab tilted up, it's pretty uh, plain and obvious to see that it's a lot easier to get at the engine when it's lifted. So just going to point out a couple things that I notice underneath here. Uh, again, this is a Cummins engine on it. Uh, which one is this? This is the ISX-12 as well, so same engine that we have in the uh, blower engine over there. Uh, right here is where our air compressor is mounted on the engine, so that comes right from Cummins, but that's what supplies all of our air for lifting up the cab, brakes, and any other air options that you may have. Um, going back here, you got your fluid reservoir for your washer fluid. Uh, if you look at this back panel here now that we have access to, again, you see another input module and a power module. So just like we saw in the blower truck, again, this truck is all command zone. Uh, all the computers talk to each other. Uh, you can also see that yellow bottle there, that's our ether start, so this truck is capable of being started at up to 40 below zero, I believe it is. It might even be lower than that. Um, I'd have to look it up in the manual to remember. Uh, right next to that, a black tube, that's your conditioning system or part of it. Um, this black, or this black and gray one down here, that's part of that SCR system that we talked about on the blower truck. Um, this guy right here, that's your fuel water separator. It's got the, I love these fuel water separators compared to some of the other ones because it has the nice sight glass in the bottom so you can actually tell if there's stuff in your filter. So you don't have to actually drain it out to find out. You can just look at it. Kind of, kind of a nice option there. 
So, that was a quick walk around and overview of both the tractor and the blower truck, and I hope you guys enjoyed your time here. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. We're planning on having a lot more YouTube videos out there for you, so keep checking back.